your serve backswing is going to influence what kind of serve style that you have. Whether you have a serve designed around explosiveness, a serve designed around power, speed, consistency, spin, you name it. It all comes down to what type of backswing that you decide to go with and on top of that, which serving style is going to match said backswing. By the end of today's video, we're gonna be focusing on three main types of backswings that you'll see almost every elite server do and exactly which one that you should perform based on your favorite serving rhythm, style, and overall fluidity or explosiveness in your shot. And if you stick around to the very end, you're also gonna get access to our free quiz that's also gonna help you to find out exactly what type of backswing is perfect for you based on your serving style and rhythm. Let's go. If you take a look at the Pro Tour, you'll notice that almost no two servers have an identical serve backswing. And this is no joke. I mean, if you look, you'll find almost every single player have some kind of unique personality or some kind of twist to their own serve. But with all of this complexity and the size, shape, and rhythm of your backswing, you can actually break down into the first principles by using the key anatomical movements that happen in the backswing to be able to find out what's the best for you. Now, Doug Eng, who is a head coach and director of Harvard's Tennis Academy, he actually classified the serve backswing into three main types. The first one is the classic windup, otherwise known as the pendulum backswing. It's gonna be the largest of the three that we'll get into. Number two is gonna be the staggered backswing, AKA the delayed backswing. And number three, most infamously known by Andy Roddick is going to be the abbreviated backswing. So we're gonna start off with the first type of backswing, the classical windup. Now the classical windup is used by players like Federer, Raonic, and Valvrinka. And this basically occurs where both of your hands are going to drop together, your release hand and your hitting hand. And then once it drops, it's going to begin rising together until you reach your pre throw position, otherwise known as your trophy position. And what happens when you lift both of your arms up together, you actually create a larger distance for your racket to travel and it helps to generate momentum going into your trophy pose, which is really gonna help when you're beginning to accelerate from there and hit your serve. Now anatomically, you can do this motion by performing a few key movements with your shoulder and your elbow. So the first one is gonna be shoulder flexion horizontal shoulder abduction, which takes it to the back and elbow flexion. You combine the three and you get your elbow up and to the side of you. And then once your upper arm reaches about your shoulder level, usually not any higher than that, you begin to bend your elbow in just like so. The reason this is important is because while your arm is staying straighter for a longer period of time, this is actually what's going to help to contribute to more momentum generation and create a larger swing path. Next up is the staggered backswing. Now, this backswing is going to be the most common backswing that you see on the ATP Tour, and it's used iconically by players like Sampras, Djokovic, and Kyrgios. Now, if you wanna execute this backswing, what you're gonna to need to do first is drop both arms together, but this time, instead of raising them together, you're actually going to lead with the release arm first, and then keep this arm behind, the hitting arm. This is also why it's called the delayed backswing because you're usually not going up at the same time like the other two. Now, unlike the classical backswing, you're actually going to notice that the staggered backswing is actually going to decrease the time that players have to move into the racket draw. So you might be wondering, why might this actually be a good thing? For some players, this might actually be an advantage as long as you can coordinate the racket drop because starting to generate momentum already from the backswing is going to help to deepen your racket drop and therefore accelerate your racket head even more to contact. And the alternative here is if you end up going through the motion here, stopping and then ending up tightening up, forcing you to push the shot. Now, anatomically speaking, Players like Kyrgios are going to do the three motions that we covered, the shoulder flexion, horizontal shoulder abduction, and elbow flexion. But this time, instead of going up and then bending, they're going to do all three motions at the same time once they begin reaching from this position here. From the side view, it actually looks like there's not a lot of distance that my racket is traveling in the staggered backswing compared to the classic. But 
take a look from the back view and you'll actually see that I have plenty of distance that I'm traveling in the correct direction, which is this right to left path. And what you'll notice is if I successfully make the racket travel to the backside of my body, I'm still putting a stretch on my shoulder, which is helping to externally rotate it and pre-stretch the muscles that are gonna help me to rotate it back in. Now again, while you do get that initial benefit of generating the momentum that helps you to drive the racket down and back, this can be a bit tricky for players to coordinate when starting out. And what some players have noted on this type of backswing is that they often feel rushed and this direct form of taking the racket back leaves them susceptible to opening their racket face up too early and then pushing the ball up to contact. So it is quite the learning process and is quite tricky to coordinate, but if you can do it, it's gonna pay off. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I, I just love this one. <laughs> the third one is the abbreviated serve. This one you'll see very commonly used by players like Gilles Simon, Gal Monfils, and Andy Roddick. Now with the abbreviated backswing, instead of dropping both of your arms this time, you're actually gonna start from a higher position and raise them straight from there into your trophy position. And the first thing to note about this is because you're starting in a higher position, often your toss arm will actually have a lot less distance to accelerate up, so it's either going to lead to an erratic or a low toss in most cases. But luckily, the abbreviated nature of this serve is going to actually be okay tossing a bit lower so long as you still give it a little bit of time to descend. And we'll get into that in another video, but for the time being, just know that the abbreviated backswing is gonna be overall shorter, faster, simpler, and more explosive. <laughs> now, anatomically speaking, we still have the same motions of shoulder flexion, horizontal abduction, and elbow flexion, but this time, because we're starting from this higher position, we actually have less distance to accelerate and so in order to build more momentum, we need to actually get greater amounts of internal shoulder rotation so that we can still actively drive the shoulder back. And because of this simple yet explosive backswing type, you'll see players like Roddick and many other players use this as a corrective mechanism to get used to their backswing and the rest of their serve before going back to any type of staggered or whatever backswing type that they had before. So we've covered the specific types of backswings and exactly what their advantages were. Now this time, we're going to dive into the dark side of all of these backswing types and identify what we call the power leakages of each type. These power leakages are putting a cap on the maximum amount of power and control that you'll feel on your serve, and you won't be able to break that cap until you've resolved these potential mistakes that you might be making. So to help you out with that, I've made a free quiz that's going to help you to not only identify the perfect backswing style for you, but also the specific power leakages and the number one mistake that you might be falling victim to depending on which one you decide to go with. And of course, how to fix it. <laughs> so be sure to click the first link in the description below and let me know in the comments what result you got. Thank you guys so much as always. It was an honor to make this video and please be sure to also leave a like if you like the video. It'll really help us out with the algorithms and growing our channel. If you haven't subscribed, help us grow our channel and our family to 100K subscribers. That's what we're going for by the end of the year. And as always, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video.